And so, I'm sure we will all be able to recall on the 23rd of March of this year, that moment when our lives became smaller. When the Prime Minister announced in those words, you must stay at home, how each of us saw the world as we know it shrink upon us. By this point, we were all already unable to come to church. But then, even more restrictions were asked of us. Don't go and see your family and friends. Only go out for essential reasons. Remain in your home and make that your existence for now. Naturally, a big adjustment was asked of all of us. And this did, of course, bring about its own difficulties. Out of all of this, though, there was a common appreciation among many people. We took the opportunity to try and appreciate a simple pace of life and to appreciate the smaller things. In the bewilderment and in the frustration of losing our normal way of life, we became more attentive to the things that we may well have missed before. I do believe that during the course of the lockdown, the garden centres and the DIY stores saw a very healthy profit. And that is understandable in many ways. As for lots of folk, there wasn't much else to do during those long months. And the thing that occurs to me about such activities as gardening and DIY is that they can be creative and they often call out of us a need to pay attention to detail. Now I myself I'm not usually a stay-at-home sort of person in my free time. I like to go out and about. It's just my way of being. I'm sure that might be the case for you as well. But in the circumstances that were asked of us, I decided to follow suit as many others across the country had done, and I got out the paint and the roller and freshened the front room, which was a huge achievement. I took a deeper appreciation in doing so, for the place that I was asked to remain. And I was reminded that actually beauty can be revealed in the minutia of detail. So, Anthony, never forget the corners or the touching up. But it's not just about activities, though, is it? It's also about people. In the fast-paced age in which we live, we can often feel like ships in the night, even within our own households or neglect the time that we can spend with friends. Again, when life became smaller, we took to our phones more. We FaceTimed and we Zoomed. We caught up properly and we had time for others. And sometimes that meant having longer and more meaningful conversations. And so it has been over the past few months that life has been about all of those small things. And so for us today, when we hear the parable of the mustard seed, it must seem that our lives can relate to this in a renewed way. For Jesus likens the kingdom of heaven to a tiny and almost insignificant seed. A seed which, when planted, grows and becomes an abundant and huge plant. And it grows so much so that even the birds can make their nests in its shrubs. Again, Jesus uses yeast as another way to help us to think about the kingdom. We can barely see yeast with the naked eye, but when we knead it into our dough and when we bake it, we know that the bread rises, almost as if from nothing. And there are also, I believe, parallels in that with the whole story of creation. For all things come from God both in heaven and on earth, and yet we believe that God has created all that exists, even from a void. Out of nothingness came the splendour of all things seen and unseen. Another thing that I found myself doing during the spare hour or two that we found that all of ourselves having during lockdown was looking at little insects under John's microscope because we've got one of those microscopes at home, and it comes provided with slides with little bugs and mites and insects in. And out of one of those slides that I was looking at, 
I found myself reflecting on the minutia of those tiny creatures under the microscope. Creatures so small that normally you wouldn't be able to see them. And yet, when we looked at them under the microscope, we could see the tiniest detail, even of the smallest of insects. And if that doesn't inspire an appreciation of the brilliance of God's creation and God in the smallest of things, what else can? Truly, the kingdom of heaven can be witnessed in the mustard seed, in the yeast, and in all living creatures. But on a deeper level, this comparison can help us to be at peace with the fact that God is present and works through the small things. And even when life becomes as contained as we have known it recently, God is very much still at work, building up the kingdom in us and all around us, according to his will and his will alone. In all of this, we are nevertheless called to be co-creators with God, for he desires that relationship with us, and we can celebrate all that we are, because without him there is nothing and he continues to do such marvellous things. And although born out of tragedy and crisis, we can take stock of all this, simply because life has indeed slowed down to many people in so many different ways, and we perhaps have got that time to look closer at the things that are going on around us. Now we all, I'm sure, can see that things are picking up again in life, and the fast pace is looking a little bit more familiar. But maybe one of the things that we can treasure from this whole experience this year is that notion of just trying to slow down a little bit and being more rooted in the moment. And one more thing that occurs and is blatantly obvious is the way in which we worship and how different that feels. There's a familiarity to it, but also I think there's a difference as well. We remain where we are seated. We sadly can't sing the hymns that we so love at this time. But even in that stillness, there is a simplicity. So perhaps, even in all of this, there is a chance to see God at work in the small and in our sense of the unfamiliar. Let him speak to us in this stillness and in this slower pace. We will one day be able to sing and we will one day be able to socialise, but not yet. But at this time, which is still God's time, let us just be in the moment and know that we are loved, for God cares for us immensely. And who knows what might be growing amongst us right now, even if we aren't fully aware of it just yet. It is what it is. But it's all held in the hands of God, who continually seeks to grow his kingdom, where we are to worship him and to offer praise to the holy name of his Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen.